Hello, welcome back uh, to my YouTube channel. Uh, another look into the Biggs archives. We're going quite a long way back as we did quite recently with a behind the scenes video on Sheffield Wednesday. Well now, a chance to look at several other famous football clubs from the same era. We're talking mid to late 1980s. And this was pretty new at the time, going access almost all areas behind the scenes, meeting people, chatting to people in quite a relaxed environment. And this one uh, concerns Leeds United, then as now, I suppose, looking to push back uh, into the top flight. Elland Road, you might see some uh, changes behind the scenes there as well. So let's go back in time. Let's go back. What are we talking? Almost four decades to a video I presented for Televideo. Enjoy if you can. empty Allen Road which has been a fairly rare sight this season and will continue to be so if Leeds United's stirring revival under manager Billy Bremner continues. It now seems quite some years since these tech terraces echoed to the roar that accompanied the great years of Don Revy, those golden years of the mid-60s and early 70s, the Leeds United era of success when this club was among the greatest in Europe. But Billy Bremner has started the revival just 18 months into his stint as manager here at Elland Road. The man who was the captain and the midfield general, Don Reeve's right-hand man on the field of play during those great years, has stirred the revival here, buying six new players in the close season, more crucial team strengthening early this year to rebuild this Leeds United side. Yes, Elland Road here is truly alive again as Leeds United head back towards the big time. The season started disappointingly with a 2-1 away defeat at Blackburn with Andy Ritchie scoring the Leeds goal. Two home games followed, the first against fellow promotion hopeful Stoke City who took the lead but were then pressured by United who squeezed home 2-1 with goals from John Sheridan and Ian Baird. All front runner, nice to play in two positions, can play in two positions, ahead of there by Berry. Turning first time short, it's there. It's there. Stoke City have scored. Bad. John Styles. Sheridan. Sheridan equalised for Leeds United. What a lovely chip. 36 minutes. And Sheridan puts Leeds United back on level terms. Useful lad, this number 11 Heath. He, he puts himself about, drops back, prepared to defend at times. That's a bad one there from uh, Dixon. Thompson. Oh! Oh dear! How near can you get Keith Edwards? Styles, Sheridan. Missed there by Mills, lets in Aspin, but I think he's shown him too much of the ball. Has he? Aspin will go, he'll chase it all the way. Good cross by Aspin. 
It's there by Ritchie. Andy Ritchie. Five days later came the first local derby of the season against Sheffield United, but it was something of a disappointment for the 18,000 fans as Leeds let chances go begging and Sheffield went away with a 1-0 victory. Then another local derby, this time away at Barnsley, a much happier outcome, Leeds coming away with all three points courtesy of a goal from Ian Baird. A tough start to the season was completed with a trip to local rivals Huddersfield, where a late John Sheridan goal gave Leeds a share of the spoils in a thrilling match. Sheridan. Baird. Went to it. Looked like a handball there. Surely a handball there. Penalty. And it's Keith Edwards to take it. He scored in the 12 minutes. Leeds United won. Hull City nil. Nice flick from Edwards. Styles. That looks that could be an own goal. Whoa, my word, Parker. Ormsby. Rennie. Ritchie. Edwards. Referee waving play on the Sheridan, has it for Leeds. What about effort from Sheridan? Baird. Taking on the skipper. Ball breaking for Randy Ritchie. Styles. Heard with him. It's a cross in. Good header by Baird. It's there. 2 1. 2 0 rather. Baird's racing in. What a good goal from Brendan Ormsby. Ian Baird sold the dummy. Ormsby got in a header. Hit the post and went in. Sheridan. Baird. Oh, Richie diving in there. Baird wanting the corner. It's a penalty. It's a penalty by the looks of it. It's Andy Richie. He's missed it. Oh, dearie, dearie me. That's a good one. Ormsby. He nipped it round the back. Out jump three defenders with the Leeds United skipper. And at the moment, it's all Leeds. Possession. Good flick on by Baird to Ritchie. Back to Ritchie. To Edwards, rather. Edwards looking for Ritchie. That's a corner ball from Brush. Brendan Ormsby, Richie, good flick inside for Styles. Took up a good position, Styles. Richie, oh, good headed by Edwards. Nearly sneaking in. He's attacking the famous cop end. Styles through for Edwards. How oh, we dearly love to score this afternoon. The ball still in play. Well, it's Ketridge back in defence. Sheridan, Baird, surely blocked the penalty. That's a penalty, and it looks like John Sheridan. So, can Leeds, after all their endeavours, take the lead? Yes, they can. One more. Sheridan puts Leeds United in the lead in the first minute in the second half. Sheridan leading from midfield. Styles. Still Styles. Baird. Oh, what a good effort from Ian Baird. That wasn't too far away. Ian Baird, the ball breaking through for Sheridan. Styles. Good save by Wood. Ormsby. Now. But Leeds 
shut about it early doors. Edwards, now then, can he get the goal he's been looking for in 12 matches? Yes, he can! 3-0! Oh, what a goal! Keith Edwards, in the dying minute. Oh, Sheridan with the free kick, full Leeds United. Ormsby, and Ormsby doing nearly what he did against Crystal Palace last week, crept up from behind, chip, fed, oh, nearly an own goal from Blake, oh dear, Callaghan robbed by Sheridan, and now it's Leeds, they've got three up, looking for bad, just a fraction too far for the crowd's liking. Day, Baird, Edwards. It's a penalty. Leeds United get a penalty. So can Leeds take the lead against the league leaders? It's all down to John Sheridan. Will Alan Knight concede his third goal in the league this season? We shall know in the next few seconds. Sheridan. One nil. Sheridan puts Leeds United in the lead for the second week in succession from the penalty spot. Moving day. Bear the flick on for Ritchie. minutes left for play and this game isn't over by any means yet Portsmouth are going to pull everything out you can rest assured Quinn looking for a penalty is he? and it looks very much like one no it is well now so Portsmouth will have a penalty so it's Quinn for Portsmouth against Marvin Day. It's a goal. So Portsmouth pull one back. And Leeds will have to concentrate 100% because the Portsmouth side are not going to wait to be taken apart. It's there. It's there. 3-1. It's all over now. Well, late arriving. Didn't arrive at the ground until half past two. Snowden, Baird, Snowden, Forsyth, Gregory, Aubrey wanting Day to come, but Davis is there, the man I was talking about, and he brings Mervyn Day into action early on, just the man I was talking about before the kick-off, but now it's Snowden, the other man I was talking about, putting it wide for Sheridan, a chase with Sage, but Sage wins the duel. And this match got off to a cracking start. Hit the bar! From Baird off the line, Ogby over the top. Oh, dearie me. And Wallington accepts it gratefully. Just a little bit ragged there as Ashley has got it away, but well laid off by Richard to Sheridan. Good throw, good run by Edward in onside. Keith Edwards. Brought down just outside the penalty area. But that was a good late run from Keith Edwards. There was no doubt he was onside. Sheridan and Snowed in there, so too is Edwards. Sheridan with a flick. Marsh, pulled back by Mickle White. Davison is there, it's still in play. Well collected by Mervyn Day because Mickle White got it back. It looked to be going for a corner. The number seven pulled it back and Mervyn Day dropped onto that one. Says regards 
shots and saves. It's uh, been a pretty barren afternoon, but it's been a hard door task out there with two sides very closely matched, hammering it out. Oh, that must have been close. The linesman's flagging it. Won't count. It's offside. It won't count. Has the referee given it? Yes, he has. Well, the linesman was flagging. But the referee's overruled the linesman. It's 2 0. But the linesman raised his flag and the uh, hands, raised hands of Mervyn Day collects that one. The linesman certainly up with his flag, but Mr. Courtney allowed the goal to stand. And Edwards took it away beautifully. And Mr. Courtney brings this match to an end. The Gilded Road end, as we sit here in the West Stand, high in the West Stand in our commentary position. Baird. Snowden, Aspen, looking for Edwards, good save by Keeley, and nearly an early strike for Leeds. Ashurst, oh what a brilliant save, again, from Ormsby, that was a superb save from Keeley. That looked a goal all the way, but the goalkeeper twisted an arch and palmed it away. Another corner. Rennie. for Edwards. We'll have to hold, there's no white shirts with him. Edwards, good shot, good save again from the keeper. Sheridan, Baird, good layoff to Sheridan. Doig wide to his right, he gets it. Good run by the number seven. Sheridan tries to chip the keeper. Oh, this just flicked for a corner. Breaking for Edwards. What a lovely ball to Snowden. Now it's three to two. Snowden got Doig wide. Now can Russell Doig put it inside to Snowden. He must score. He has. Two nil. Could be a factor. Good free kick. Ashurst down to Hughes. It's a goal. Uh, Hughes was rather fortuitous there. He shot. His shot was intended for goal, and it ricocheted to Jerry Armstrong. Snowden for Aspen. Fullback gets there. Edwards, well brought down, finds Aspen. Edwards, brilliant. A bird, rather. Brilliant. Brilliant goal by Ian Bird. Could make keep it in play. He has done. Good work by Raoul. Good work by the number seven. Saunders, good shot and a good save. Billy, a slightly unfamiliar view of the pitch from here. Not one that you uh, normally adopt, I think. Not normally. Uh, I usually spend oh, 80, 90 percent of the game up in the stand. And uh, I use the telephone if I want to get any information down to Dave Bentley. And, uh, because as you can see, I mean, it's just, all you can see is a forest of legs at this level. Uh, you can't really get a true picture about what's happening. It must be agonising for you up in the director's box though sometimes, isn't it? Well, funny enough, I'm calmer up there, and I can, I can take things into a lot of perspective up there, where when I'm down here, you get, you get wrapped up in the game down here, where up there you're a lot more calmer and you can look at the game and uh, a bit dispassionately. Now, last summer was a very busy one for you, Bill. You signed six new players, really shaking up the whole place, but did you feel, having signed those players, that you had got the nucleus of a promotion side? Yeah, it's, it's always very difficult to say. You, you bring people in and you hope they're going to do a job and some come off for you and some don't. That, that, that happens in, in every walk of life. Um, but we knew we had, because we'd been Leeds United, we knew teams would always play better against Leeds United than they do normally. Uh, we knew it was always going to be a difficult task. 
And when we got to to the back end of the year, um, we realised then that we were still going to be short uh, because the players that we wanted were just out of our price range. Um, so that's when I, I came to the conclusion that, that we had to sell Ian Snowden. That obviously was crucial, that reorganisation, having sold Ian Snowden and bringing four new players in, but to, to react fairly quickly, didn't you, to the market situation? That's right, but um, we also knew beforehand who we wanted. Um, and we had been negotiating with the clubs involved uh, for about four weeks before that. And we knew round about the price uh, that they were looking for. Mickey was Mickey's was straightforward enough. Uh, John Pearson was straightforward enough. Bobby McDonald, obviously. Uh, Mark took Mark Hazelwood took another. Uh, I think it was about another week, or ten days after that. Uh, that was the most difficult because we still hadn't hassled over the, the official price for it. And once we got that sorted out, uh, from there I think we lost. I think we only lost about three games then. Up, up till present. But did you genuinely feel when you signed these four players that there was still time for a promotion bid? Because it's perhaps rare for so many players to settle in so quickly to a team. It is, but we, we had a we had a good camp in in the sense that uh, it, it was a good camp. We didn't have any bad apples in the camp. They're, they're all decent enough guys, and uh, the four guys came in and we knew all about them and what the characters were like, and we and they blended in quite well. Um, we got the the results initially when they first came to the club, which always helps. Um, and at the end of the day, um, they've helped us tremendously. And the team has responded as a whole. And we've got ourselves into the position that we've got ourselves today. John Pearson, you had a fairly critical decision to make, didn't you, uh, early in the new year in January, yeah. either to stay with Charlton or come here to Leeds United. Why did you decide on the move? Uh, in the end, I don't think it was that big a decision. I was glad to get back up to Yorkshire from Sheffield. And uh, coming to Leeds was a dream come true, really. I was leaving Charlton, who were a first division club, but potentially I think this is a, well, obviously a, a lot bigger club than Charlton. Did it help that you arrived in a, in a rush of new players? You were one of four to be signed by Billy Bremner around yes. that same time. Yes, I think so. I mean, uh, it wasn't as though one was having to settle in. There was four of us having to settle in, but uh, it went. I think we all settled in fairly quickly. We've had some good results and uh, things have gone quite well. You say you settled in fairly quickly, but there was some anxiety because you're a striker, you're expected to score goals, and you went, what was it, 14 matches without scoring? Yeah. How did you feel during that run? It could have been worse, I think. Uh, I've got a lot of people to thank that the pressure wasn't put on me. Uh, and I didn't feel it as much as perhaps other times when I've not gone as many games without scoring. You know, say if I've only gone eight, so many games like that. I felt more pressure, but uh, people were really good to me. And when the goal came, that was obviously a big relief. But uh, as I say, I've got a lot to thank other people for. The goal, in fact, uh, coming at Shrewsbury just a few days after yes. your disappointing defeat. Disappointing only in the result in the FA Cup semi final with Coventry. You yeah. played so well, of course. And then the lads had to pick themselves up for that game at Shrewsbury, and you did it. Yes. Uh, I think that the Shrewsbury game came at a good time for us. I mean, a lot of people might have thought that he didn't. Uh, going to Shrewsbury was obviously a hard game, but coming so soon after the semi-final, we went away. You know, the gaff said to us after the game, "What do you want to do? You know, do you want to come in and we'll travel on the day to the game, or we'll go overnight?" And I, I think we made the right decision. We went overnight, got all the lads back together again. You know, we picked ourselves up and we said, "Right, we're going to give it a really good goal now." And you had to wait a little while longer for your first goal at Ellen Road, which came in the match against West Brom. Yes. It was just a header over the line from about three feet, but that must have been uh, <laughs> yeah, a great definitely. moment. Yeah, it was a great moment. I mean. Uh, like you say, it was the last game of the season, with, you know, not including the playoffs. So uh, it was nice to get one eventually here. Absolutely. You say you weren't put under pressure, not even by the fans for that run of 14 games yes. without scoring. Oh, uh, different class, really. You know, uh, I think it was maybe because we were winning in those times. If the results hadn't gone so well, obviously, then they might have, uh, you know, been looking to me to, you know, put my name in the score sheet. But uh, things went well. So, I mean. It, Everybody says it, but I don't think it matter who scores, as long as Leeds are winning. I don't think there was any question, though, of you not playing well, because Billy Bremner bought you to do a, a job as the strong target man up front, and in fact that also has seemed to release Ian Baird for a, a new role in which he's shown his ability on the ground as well. I think that Ian Baird's shown this year what, like, what a good player he is. 
by, um, well, he was doing sort of my job before and scoring, and then he's gone and done a sort of different job, which I think he enjoys more. Uh, I think it's given him a little bit more freedom now to do sort of what he feels he's best at, and uh, he's been popping a few goals. Now. Wilson Matthews, Richie, Sheridan, Richie again, Hazelwood, nice touch to Pearson, again Hazelwood, to bad, he brought down, it has to be a penalty, and it did, so McElhenney brings down Ian Baird in the fourth minute, and Leeds United have the penalty, well he can't complain at that one. Good goal, 1-0. Well, that's a fine start for Leeds United. It's Baird and Pearson linking up to Richie. Good ball to Baird. What a lovely back heel for Aspen. Now it comes in. Richie. Sheridan has to wait for the bounce. Richie, left foot. That was a brilliant save. That had goal written all over it from Andy Ritchie, and that was a brilliant save from Steve Cherry. Sheridan taking over from Baird. Now McDonald. Baird finding himself a space, showing too much of it. Sheridan gets the bounce. Good shot. Pearson, Adams, Ritchie, turning well, inside to Baird, 2-0, what a lovely goal, that was beautiful. Sheridan again, never far away from the action, John Sheridan. Running into trouble a bit now, but a nice back heel to Ritchie. Again, Sheridan, just look at this. Richie Adams gets the corner. Well, Leeds are turning on the screw now. Richie again popping up, seemingly from a hole in the ground to Pearson leaving it for Sheridan. Oh, and that took a deflection. Hazelwood, Adams, Pearson. It's there, Ian Baird gets his second, it's Leeds United's third, but that man John Pearson making it all possible. Again, Jackie Ashurst has to confirm what they're saying, and ceremoniously in, did the easy simple thing, and away he goes on this run. Baird, oh, what a lovely goal, that's his hat-trick. 4-0, what a lovely goal. Hazelwood giving it away, uncharacteristically. Aspen. Aspen. Pearson to Aspen again to Edwards. Now there's plenty of support. He's got Baird to his left. Edwards. Left over the top. Adams, a low one to bed. Got his shot in. Hazelwood, Pearson, Hazelwood again, Herlock away, Ormsby, tries a half volley. Oh, hit the ball! Richie Adams. So Mamet has not come out in the second half. Burn is on, but it's Richie for Leeds. Shoots. 
Good shot. And not too far away. Baird. Adams. Richie. It's there. 2-0. The goalkeeper never moves. Him to Marks. Good shot, good save. January saw the start of a determined Leeds push to reach the promised land of the First Division, but the new year also featured the start of a tremendous cup run which all but ended up at Wembley. Time cross, Ormsby. Good tackle by Baird. Sheridan. Pearson. Baird. Looks it onside. Got a lot of white shirts up there. Well, Richie was pushed out by two red shirted defenders. Adams looking for Pearson. Chivers going, Richie coming in to try and retrieve something loose. Baird as ever going in hard, giving a good ball to Aspin. Oh, what can the fullback do? Inside to Baird. Just got his international a good run. Styles. Rennie. That's looking for Richie. Good shot, good save. What a nice ball from. David Rennie, an equally good shot from Richie. Sheridan. Adams. That's a lovely cross. Pearson. What a lovely cross from Adams. What a lovely header back by Pearson. And there was he in bed. 1 0. Rennie. Sheridan. With Pearson and James. Pearson. Style. Look Clive Walker. Rennie. Trip there, but the referee allows the advantage to Aspin, who pushed it too far. Still has it. Keeps the ball in. It's the corner ball. Brendan Ormsby hovering on the penalty spot. To low one. Pearson. Ormsby. Richie. Straight at David Seaman. Styles. For Baird. He's on now. He's Baird. Seaman saves. But this is superb stuff from Leeds United. Panic again. Ashhurst. That's an on goal. Pull his lead crowd would just about bring the house down. First side should get a goal. Bad. Ormsby. Buckley, has he got the legs of James? Yes. Well, a good cross from the winger. And Chivers was happy to put that one for the corner. Five minutes left. Back header by Pitt. Oh, yes! Pearson ahead of Jordan. Straight that he's decided not to use it. Adams, a one-two with, Ad with Edwards. That's good. Cross coming in. Richie. Good save by Tonks. Pearson couldn't turn, but uh, it's with Sheridan. 
Thompson gets it out. But that was uh, a heart-stopping moment for the Wigan supporters then. Putting the ball packed. Gilmell's packed with Leeds supporters. Oh, Pearson got a lovely header in. There's no one there to take advantage of that one. Rennie back again. Tonks coming. Hello. Ooh, a lot of space there by Hilditch. And again, Morfin Day with his legs from Thompson. Putting on the pressure now in this last minute of the first half. Styles to Edwards. Styles. That's a lovely ball for Sheridan. John Sheridan now. Can he get round the centre back? Turns. Shoots. Good save by Tunks. It's a corner. Knows. Ashurst. Thompson. Blocked by Swan. Back to Thompson again. To Lowe. That's a good cross. Campbell hit the post. Well, Bobby Campbell hit the post. And it was scrambled back by Ashurst to Mervyn Day. Out by Hilditch. Good goal! John Stiles. So John Stiles puts Leeds United in the lead. Pearson beaten by Beasley to Hilditch. Campbell, nice knockdown for Thompson. Allowed to go is Thompson. It's wide, loose for Griffiths. And just wide. Good work by Andy Ritchie. That's the pass. But he's still there. It breaks for Adams. The full-back going through, he shoots, what a lovely goal! Mickey Adams, 2-0! That was a cracker! And the crowd literally packed into every corner, well over 50,000, something like 51, 52,000 here. Lenny, Styles, turn inside, 1-2 with Baird, Baird looking to his right. Aspen on the overlap, the full-back. Aspen knocked again, uh, having a dip. But Ritchie, back again. Taking on the full-back, gets the cross in. Good save. And Steve Aguzovic proving that the half-an-hour warm-up really did come to fruition then, because that was a brilliant save. Good one, Rene, it's there, Rene scores! Fast, tricky, number seven, play, nice to play on the wing or right inside of midfield and his ex-colleague Mickey Adams having a bit of a roasting and a chance there for Regis and that wasn't far away. That's Peak. Ormsby. Again, Bennett and Ormsby could be going for a goal kick. Ormsby's lost it, Bennett across the goal mouth, he comes through, Jim, it's one all. Mickey Jim has equalised for Coventry City. The Leeds defenders being put on the rack, it's through again to Aspen, he falls, Sheridan's there, Ho Chin, we must go for Coventry, he has! 2-1, Coventry lead. Paddock to Ormsby, Rennie, Ritchie trying to get his cross in, Mickey Jin back defending still, Ritchie, Edwards, 2-2, two -two. oh Edwards stole up from a hole in the ground, it's 2-2. Two -two. Can come to do anything with this. There's not long to go. Regis, Hochin, Bennett. Yes, we do. Coventry 
Crombie take the lead. Bennett in the 99th minute. Paddock, signing from Newcastle. Lost here by Bremner. Bird keeps it in play. Turn, another blue shirt between him and the goal. Whatever the disappointment of losing that semi-final to Coventry, one thing it did prove was that this Leeds United side appears to be more than capable of holding its own against that sort of opposition. Oh yeah, I mean, we, we had um, QPR here as well and we proved then that we can match first division sides and we played Coventry and everyone expecting them to have an easy game, but I mean, we gave them a fright. I think we deserved more than what we got. But um, we proved we can hold our own against first division sides and um, we're just looking now to improve on what we've done this season. Been a lot of memorable moments, and notably, perhaps for you personally, that winning goal against Queens Park yeah, Rangers yeah. here in the FA Cup. Yeah, that was one of the highs of the season for me so far. Um, it was one each, it was five minutes to go, and it looked as though he was going for a replay on their pitch. And we just had the corner, I went up, Big John got the flick on, and it just came to me. I knew there was three players on the line, and I just wanted to head it high. And I didn't think he'd have a chance of stopping it, and luckily it went in. And it was on the fence at the far end that kept me in the ground. But <laughs> I've had a, a couple of downs since, but um, that's, for me so far, that's been the highlight of the season. Yeah, we hear about people invading the pitch. You nearly invaded well, the terraces. Well, I tried to invade yeah. the end, but uh, I seen the policeman coming towards me, and I thought he was going to arrest me. So I jumped down very quickly. But it wasn't anything. It was just uh, me infused. I mean, I think it was the momentum of my run that kept me going. And it was just a fence stop me. That's your excuse, and you're yeah, sticking to it. Using, yeah, I'm sticking to that. What about these supporters here? They they have waited very, very patiently for a return of the great days, which many of them can still remember under Don Revy. But they've also had to live with a reputation, whether justified or unjustified. What's your personal experience of these supporters? Well, to be honest, I've never seen supporters like them. I mean, we all keep saying it in the press and to, you see supporters and you talk to them and you say how great they are, but I think some of them might think we're just saying it because we're actually talking to them, but um, they are the best supporters I've ever seen. There is a, a small minority who do get the club a bad name, but I think in the last two or three months they, they haven't been behaving as badly as they were in the start of the season. Um, the one black spot of the season was the game at Bradford, but I mean, the, the FA lifted the ban on travelling supporters and it left it all wide, wide open and for trouble, but I've never known supporters like them, they deserve success, they've had five years out of the first division and hopefully we can get back in, um, we'll get the big crowds what this club can get every week and we deserve it and they deserve it more than anyone really, they've been patient, uh, they followed us in the cup run, they were tremendous at Sheffield and uh, they've been coming week in and week out, 20,000 plus. And we owe it to them, really, to try and uh, give them some success, because everyone talks about the old days with the Gaffers team and all that. There can never be another team to match that sort of team. So we just hope we can win something and they'll start talking about us then. I know one thing that there will always be, well, your manager of Leeds United is a constant throwback and a reminder to the great days of the 60s and 70s when you were the general on the field for Don Revie. Has that loaded with you with, with any extra sense of responsibility or pressure to if you like, lead leads back in that direction from a different job here as manager? No, not, not really. I mean, most of the lads who played in that era anyway have got a, a great affinity towards the club. Um, I'm no different and uh, my big ambition in life when I, when I took over first in, in management in Doncaster, my biggest ambition was to one day be able to manage Leeds United. I've, I've got that opportunity now. Uh, it's up to me to make the best of that opportunity because it's, it's a dream come true for me really to come back to Leeds where I'd been a player and try to prove myself as a manager now. You've certainly got the potential here with these, these supporters. Ah, they're incredible. I mean, they... I mean, people say support can't... You, you only play the 11 players on the park, uh, but here at Leeds United you don't because they're worth a goal start or they should be worth a goal start to us. And sometimes when... When we were playing at home or away from home and we're starting to dip a little bit, they seem to be able to sense when we're dipping um, and maybe we're tiring a wee bit or whatever and they pick us back up again. And I mean, I can't think of how much, uh, how much the mentors this year and, and even last year when we were struggling, uh, they pulled us through at the end of the day. Well, this afternoon, Leeds United entertained fourth placed Ipswich Town in what is a vitally important match. United and seem to have been saying this the last few weeks but it's now getting very very important with the playoffs looming at the end of the season. Adams 
Pearson, good knockdown to Ritchie. Good turn by Andy Ritchie. That was a lovely ball to Neil Aspin. But the cross, oh, it wasn't a good one, but it's made a better one. McDonald, Baird just slipping. Pearson to Baird. McDonald, yes! Bobby McDonald has scored for Leeds United. Dazell. Back for Humes, good shot, good save. Ormsby, Pearson, Richie, Sheridan, yes! What a lovely goal, 2 0. Brennan, a lot of uh, shirts assembled in the Legion United penalty area. Ashurst, Hazelwood. Touchdown have got one back through centre forward Humes, Leeds failing to clear. Well, certainly a very interesting match for the football purists. There's a lot of football being played out there and there's a lot of pressure. As the corner, the free kick comes in, Adams. Brendan Ormsby, 3 1. Pounds for return pass. Pearson back in defence, that's a goal. And he gets Leeds United's first corner after 15 minutes play. Nil nil, the score. Sheridan to take the corner. Ooh, Pearson. It's off the line from Edwards. Pearson, brilliant save. Wigley. This player go. Good turn. Not in that. Oh, and a free header for Handy Sides. And Sheridan bends it. Yes! in the lead. Edwards, Adams. A ricochet to Bird, yes! Here's Bird, gets number two. Sheridan. And Bird. Bird gets the third and his second. Edwards, Sheridan, still Sheridan gets the tail poke through to Baird, loose for Pearson, back again, trying to squeeze it through for Edwards, Edwards, yes, Mario, Keith Edwards gets the goal, Mario. Sheridan, good save by Andy Gorham. There's Wood, looking for Pearson, this time he gets ahead to it, Gorham struggling, Ritchie, oh what a chance for Andy Ritchie. Sheridan, Ormsby's there, Baird's there, it's just wide. A bit more of that wanted now from Leeds. Pearson, Ashurst, and Gorham has it. Edwards, yes! Keith Edwards has got the goal that Leeds were looking for. And John Sheridan beautifully flowed a free kick. So Keith Edwards on for Andy Ritchie. Gets that little bit of something special. Leeds one, Oldham nil. Welcome to Allen Road for the match between the second division Leeds United 
and Charlton Athletic from the first division. This is the second leg of a two-legged final playoff for a place in Division 1 next season. And as far as Leeds United are concerned, this must be the match of the season. And to say the atmosphere is electric is an understatement indeed. A capacity crowd is expected to see Billy Bremner's side trying to gain promotion in only his second term as team manager. But, uh, Charlton defence looked a little bit leaden-footed there, so the corner from John Sheridan. Oh, it's a hanging nasty one, Baird's coming in. Ashurst, it's cleared by Shirtliff, Adams. Hazlewood. Paul Miller, 115,000 signing from Spurs. Hazlewood, that took a deflection. Taylor, he's there! Sheridan, he's got a run now. Edwards wants it. The final pass too far. Boulder using the full 18 yard box. But the referee blows the whistle, so the game ends one all on aggregate. And a replay will be needed on Friday night at Birmingham St Andrews Ground. Kick off 7.30.
So, overall, it's been a great season with some lows, even more highs, heartbreak and tension. But above all, a season of excitement, a season of consolation for a double near-miss on glory. And through all this, you, the fans, have been deservedly rewarded with some great action and some great goals. See you again in August. A turn by the fullback. One of Aspirin's famous runs coming up. Will he have a dip? Yes! He scored! Oh, what a goal! Neil Aspin! What a lovely goal! White for Thompson. Edwards, yes! Keith Edwards! Three minutes on the watch. Keith Edwards again from that man, Pearson. That's a lovely ball to Richie. Nice ball to Edwards. Yes! And the Richie! Well, this could probably see the police. Sheridan. 2-0. 